<laughs> That's great. <laughs> I had a pint now, I'm better. <laughs> Hi, my name's Edinburgh. Welcome to Macabre London. <laughs> Sorry. We will show you. Welcome to this video. I realised that I started filming and didn't do an introduction, so here's the introduction. This is our trip to Edinburgh. We are making our way up the country very slowly and um, stopping off in Durham and this is our first stop in Durham Cathedral. Now Durham Cathedral is um, quite an interesting place, it's very old. Construction actually started in 1093 and it took 40 years to build and it's one of the only cathedrals in the whole of England that still maintains its original glory of uh, how it looked in the Norman times. We hadn't really planned to do anything when we got to Durham, we just kind of wanted to stop over for the night and just get some food, but this uh, cathedral just seemed like it needed to be explored, so we just went in and had a look, um, and I was really pleasantly surprised. It was um, just way more um, interesting than I thought it was going to be, quite often with the cathedrals where they've been changed on the inside, like it's not that interesting, but this one was um, yeah, super interesting to go and have a look at, just because it is so very old, and um, I doubt you'd ever see anything like this ever again. So where are we? We're in Durham. We're in Durham. Yeah. <laughs> Why, you may be asking? It's because we're going to Edinburgh. So we've stopped on the way. Yeah, to break up the journey. If you're trapped in the UK, what are you, where are you going to go? Durham, Durham apparently. <laughs> so we're headed out to dinner now, which is why we're actually wearing actual outside clothes instead of pajamas for once. Hoping to go and eat at a little pub that we saw down by the river. Yeah, everything seemed to be booked up, so I hope we get a walk in. Um, yeah. A lot of places are closed. It's quite. Um, I think it might just because it's a Monday night, but also because we're well, lockdown. Yeah. So we shall see. We might get some dinner, and if we don't, there's a nice fish and chip shop. Yeah, yeah, so that's the, the fallback fall plan. Back. That's it really, nothing else to report. Oh, we have a hot tub in our room. That's something to report. Yeah, there's a sneaky upgrade apparently because they double booked us. And um, yeah, we've got a really fancy room, a little lodge. With a hot tub, which mm -hmm. is good. The hot tub's very hot. Yeah, yeah we basically <laughs> boiled ourselves like lobsters if they run. Yeah, which is why my hair is also extra curly because I managed to get it wet. Feeling full? Yeah, but still, good to go to a cheap place, isn't it? All the expensive places were, were, were too busy. Result. <laughs> Half eight in the morning, we're going to leave in about 40 minutes. Uh, let's see where Nikki is. In here. No. Not in here. Is she in here? I think you've become addicted. <laughs> Breakfast hot tub. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Okay. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah. This is what you do though, is it? This is the life you're used to. Pretty fancy now, aren't you? I'm never leaving. Okay. But well, we've got to leave in about, well, just get ready to leave in about 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. There we are. Beautiful Durham. See you in a bit, I'm gonna go have me brekkie. Never leaving. <laughs> Bye. 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 Where are we going? Gala Shields. I don't know what it is, but Neil says we should go there, so we're going there. A little town, a pretty little town in the borders of Scotland. It's already looking nice, we're in Northumbria now. There's uh, lots of lovely stone houses, lots of trucks lots piling of towards us at high speed. <laughs> Rainy. And it's raining and horrible walkers. But yeah, it's quite pleasant. No traffic. No 
just having a chilled little trip up to uh, to Scotland now. It's a couple of hours to Gala Shields and a couple more hours to Edinburgh, I think. Yeah, good times. Look at this, we're going to go up and down. Off the edge of the world, Wee. Wee. It is grim. Yeah, I'm grim up now. Blind summit. No, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if we get some air. Yeah, yeah. You can do it. <laughs> You're slowing down. We're not going to get any air. But, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> this next one looks even better. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't think that's gonna last. Yeah. Reduce speed. Oh. I think this is a Roman road. It's very, very straight. Yeah. So they haven't gone around the hills. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the car. How was it in Scotland? Uh, it's wet and rainy. Yeah? Yeah. How was it in England? Uh, I don't know, that's back there. Oh, okay. But also, wet and rainy. Not long after the border, we stopped off at Jebra, which is a little historic town that has lots of these little squares behind the houses, which is uh, very cute. And this beautiful 12th century Augustinian abbey as well. And they also have a house where Mary Queen of Scots uh, stayed in 1566 when she conducted royal inspection of the border. But while she was here, she was taken ill and she nearly died. And then apparently before her execution, she said that she wished that she'd actually died here instead of uh, having to, to be executed. So um, that's cheery. But here's the house. Cats. Ah, oh, come by the cats. <laughs> Knock on the window. From £20. All £500. £20. It's very pretty here, but it's also very rainy. So that. Where's Jedburgh? So we've made it to Edinburgh. What did we do? Oh, we went to Jedburgh. You know that. Stopped at Jedburgh on the way instead of Galashiels. Yeah. I'm tired because I drove the whole way because something else didn't drive. <laughs> she wouldn't let me drive because she said oh, I get too excitable in the rain. But we're going to go and get some dinner now. Oh, yeah. Ready for a, uh, a nice pub dinner. In a traditional Irish pub since we're here. <laughs> There's an internal door between our hotel and the pub so we don't need to go out in the rain. Which is ideal. So that's the plan. It's still wet. It's not going to be the best dinner of our lives. It might be, you never know. But it will be... Irish. It will be a dinner. I've had beer in there before and it was yeah. good. Good. Because it's beer. So, mm. yeah, we're going to go and have some dinner. Mm. And then have a sleep. All right, Nikki, what have you done? <laughs> Everybody else is having these little shots. So I wanted to know. I don't want to be left out. These are pints of Guinness. We've just grown to be about 40 feet tall. Cheers, my dears. Drink, drink, drink. Oh, that's really nice. That's nice. <laughs> we have one of those every morning from now on. That's really good. Mm. These tiny Irishmen know what they're doing. Yeah. Come here. Hey, yeah. Uh, how's it going? Shopping in my favourite shop. Okay. Um, strong vintage. Mm. Which is the best vintage shop in the whole of Edinburgh. Yeah, there's two, br two branches. Maybe more? Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's, that's perfect uh, Wednesday morning music. Oh yeah, cool. Castle Poppy. Castle Poppy. Okay. Saying castle in Northern. Yeah, we've got you now. Castle. Oh. Ah, this is some pointless weird. There we go. Castle. Castle. Poppy. <laughs> okay, where are we going today? We're going to Braveyard to begin with. Yeah. Because that's how all good holidays start, is with mm -hmm. a trip to the Braveyard. Mm -hmm. hat shop. Mm. Get myself a chapeau. Yeah. Get a matching mask. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with the, uh, the most haunted tomb in the whole of the churchyard. Yeah. Seems like the sort of thing you would do. John Bain of Pitcarley. This is said to be one of the most haunted graves in the whole of Greyfriars Churchyard. It's meant to be haunted by a poltergeist. Not that we saw anything, but it's a pretty scary grave. So this is Christmas. This is Greyfriars Kirkyard, churchyard. Kirkyard because yeah. Kirk. Kirk is Scottish. Scottish yeah. for church. I apologise in advance for the amount of times I do a bad Scottish accent because I can't do it. <laughs> oh, and I look hideous today, so that's a treat for you as well. Seems to be a, a collection of sticks here, which I don't know if that's anything to do with Greyfriars Bobby, but I thought he was over there so maybe this is the original well he can't fetch them anymore can he no i can't but i don't know i don't know what it says on the other side not a lot so maybe that's the one um so if you're not familiar with the story of Greyfriars bobby bobby was a little doggy whose owner died and then when uh, after they buried him bobby followed him to the grave and then refused to leave the side of his owner, who was buried. It's very, very sad. faithful dog. Very faithful dog. And much celebrated in Edinburgh to this day. Yeah. So you see Bobby everywhere. Um, and there's even a little statue of him outside the churchyard. And there's loads of skulls and crossbones in here, which is a burial marker tradition in the 1700s. And then when it came to the 1800s or so, we stopped doing that because death was more taboo I guess yeah. whereas this was what you would be turned into yeah so this was where all the all the, the famous knobs. people of Edinburgh were buried so just to give you a few more facts about the churchyard, it's the oldest churchyard in the whole of Scotland, with the church being completed and obviously the graveyard after that in 1620. Just under a hundred years later, the church itself actually blew up. Um, the end of it blew up because there used to be gunpowder stored in it. Um, and so the end of the church was reduced to ruins and a new west wall was built. But before then, in 1638, a very important document called the National Covenant was presented and signed in front of the pulpit of the church. And this really helped the Scottish people, giving them civil freedom and also religious freedom as well. But one of the reasons why this graveyard is deemed to be so important and so famous is because of two men called William Burke and William Hare who were grave robbers and they stole bodies to sell to the local surgeon's college which wasn't too far away from this churchyard. Now it's not known whether they did actually steal any bodies from here. Um, chances are they probably just murdered people and handed them over instead because that would have been much less effort than digging up a grave. But as I was result of grave robbing which was a real practice and it did happen you will see a few more safes that are dotted around in the churchyard which are just cages which are locked over graves to stop the bodies from being stolen 
One of the more modern things that the churchyard is known for is that when J.K. Rowling was living in Edinburgh, she actually used to visit the kirkyard quite often and took inspiration from a lot of the names on the graves for characters in the Harry Potter novels. Now I know she's become quite a controversial figure over the last few years but the fact of the matter is that hundreds if not thousands of Harry Potter fans come and visit the churchyard just to find the names. Hang on, you have to say... My name's Nicky Drees, welcome to Macabre London. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> Hi, my name's Edinburgh, welcome to Macabre London. <laughs> it's probably the graveyard separated off and it's gated. It's got, I guess... Um, Gravediggers Union signs or something on the, on the walls or similar. It's little coffins and then spades, shovels. Covenanter's prison. Behind these gates lies... It's really difficult to read, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Behind these gates lies part of the Greyfriars Kirkyard, which was used in 1679 as a prison for more than 1,000 supporters of the National Covenant who had been defeated by government forces at the Battle of Bothwell Brig on the 22nd of June. For more than four months, these men were held here without any shelter, each man being allowed four ounces of bread a day. Kindly citizens were sometimes able to give them some more food. Some of these prisoners died here, some were exiled, or some were trialled and executed for treason. Some escaped and some were freed after signing a bond of loyalty to the crown. All those who were persecuted and died for their support for the National Covenant in the reigns of Charles II and James VII are commemorated by the Martyrs Memorial on the northeastern wall of the Kirkyard. The Covenant, which was first signed in Greyfriars Kirk in 1638, promised to defend Presbyterianism from the intervention of the Crown. So there you go. I feel like this would be quite easy to escape from. Give us a shifty over the wall. <laughs> Due to the amount of hardships that people suffered here, this is meant to be one of the most haunted areas of the cemetery. But if you're brave enough and you fancy going in, they do hold tours every Thursday. I think I can hear Bobby. That ghost of wee Bobby. Ignore that dog, it was definitely the ghost of wee Bobby. When Bobby died at the age of 16, after spending 14 years at the graveside of his owner, John Gray, he was allowed to be buried in the churchyard, which up until that point had been strictly reserved for humans. But in order to honour him a bit further, in 1981 this pink granite headstone was erected for him, and kind visitors now leave sticks underneath it as a token of their respect for Bobby. And just a short stroll away outside the gates of the churchyard, he has his own little statue, which is apparently meant to be true to size. So there he is. What a good boy. There she goes. Food. Food. He's feeling a bit tired today. Tired. Yeah. yeah. Aww. I drove all the way to Scotland. I don't know yeah. if I told you. Yeah, it's true. I was there. Oh dear. Sleepy. What you got? Ice cream. Where from? Mary's Milk Club. Yeah, apparently it's a very it's famous to uh, place. To go. We'll get this in the sun. Oh yeah. Nice. I've got rose and pistachio. Yeah, mine's uh chocolate and cherry. Hmm. Now we're going to go up to the castle. Well not up to the castle, we're yeah, going to go the sit green. on that big green. Yeah. Pistachio. It's quite salty. Right. It's quite creamy. The rose isn't very rosy. No. It's not like Turkish delight right now. Hmm. I'd say it's a good combo. Yeah, mine's like uh, Black Forest Gatto. Some yeah, please. Uh. Oh, yeah, quite mild. Tastes a bit boozy. Mm. I said that about everything today. I said about my goat's cheese as well. My goat's cheese was definitely boozy. Mm. Is it you that's boozy? Yeah. Nikki thought she was dying earlier on, but it turned out she was just hungover. 
Neil says that confidently and smugly like he's never done that before. I had a pint and now I'm better. So if you too feel like you might be dying, you're probably just run over. Mm. Yeah, apparently their ice cream is made fresh every day. There's always a queue outside. The queue's um, getting longer actually. The queue's not so bad. Sometimes it's been hugely long. Right up the steps at the side there. Yeah. Mm. It's the benefits of going on, on holiday during a, a pandemic. Things are slightly less busy than usual. We stopped into Monteith's, which is my favourite restaurant in Edinburgh, um, and I had the crispy haggis for starters with like a little hash brown. It's amazing. Hey, where you been? Uh, been uh, at the back. It's a hot tub. Oh, okay. So I'm just on my way to get tattooed. It's very noisy outside. I'm just walking through the grass market I'm on my way to some, uh, um, which I will show you in a second. And it's time for me to have another day session on my sleeve, which I always dread getting done. I hate it. I get really nervous beforehand, but you know, it's part of the process. <laughs> you know you've got to earn these things so i've just picked up some water and some uh, very vital tonics caramel wafers to keep me going then neil's going to come and meet me in a short while so it's time to go in and semper has got the most wonderful view you can see that Ta -da! there's the castle right time to go in exciting times i will see you in a short while film my transfer Stencil, I should say, not transfer. <laughs> that makes it sound like a stick yeah, on. <laughs> I know, how many times? <laughs> so, this is going to be the next bit. So, we're putting in all the, the buildings. So, it's going to be lots of fun little individual lines. So, I'm sure David is, David is really thrilled about having to do this for me. <laughs> um, there is a gap here, which is also going to be filled in as well. So... Fun times. Time to get going. So I didn't film much of the process of the tattoo, if actually any at all, because I found it a little bit tricky that day. It was just um, in a really sensitive area on the inside of my arm. So um, here's the uh, the reveal instead. So my arm is quite puffy and swollen, but I'm getting there now. It's the building falling in the in the background, and then. Around the side there, there's some smoke. We're getting there. It's sore now, it's very puffy. Look at my rosy face. Yeah. Do you think you're a bit sunburned? A bit sunburned, a bit dehydrated, I think. Yeah, I, uh, back at the hotel room, I was like, uh, should I drink more water? I was like, oh, well, you know, booze has a bigger effect on me if I'm, if I'm fully hydrated. So I chose to avoid water and now I'm regretting This isn't going in your video, is it? <laughs> yeah, all bogling all night. You feel it? My oh, arm is very chunky. That's how you get muscles. Feel yeah. very swollen. You <laughs> look how swollen. Yeah. You've got an enormous arm now. Yeah. It's like Dave Grohl in the Ever Everlong video. <laughs> Twist it round. The pocket of blood is pretty starting to form. It's going to be lovely patterns on the on the uh, duvet tonight. Well, it'll be wrapped up. It's just going to be done. <sighs> right, I'm going to go for a wee. Have a good time. Right now. <laughs> Uh, where are we? In the hanging bat. What's the hanging bat? It's a craft beer pub. They used to do food. But they don't anymore. Yeah. So we've had to rethink our plans. And now I've looked for bread, meat, bread, which is just opposite, which is a burger place. Mm. We 
burgers. I need a burger after everything I've been through today. No offence. <laughs> It's good. I don't know where to start though, it's quite a big burger. Ah oh, yeah, this is bigger than the human jaw can take, I think. Ah. I have poutine. And very good, it's very salty, and very cheesy. And then the burger that I wanted, they didn't have, so I've had to settle for something else, which I don't really know what it is. <laughs> But I think it's chicken and halloumi. But originally I wanted the burger that was a donut. We'll do. I've got tiny Prince Charles. There he is. <laughs> He's giving you the old uh, the old spiel. Yeah. Do I need to do that as well? I'm gonna carry him round. I don't know how this works. Mine's an Italian. <laughs> He <laughs> pressed the bit at the beginning. <laughs> tells you. Anyway, here's the scenery. We're at Holyrood Palace. Palazzo Holyrood as it's known. <laughs> I like this fountain. It's good. Is it a fountain or is it just a... Oh no, I guess it did have water in it at one point. It's got lots of tassels. Tassels. Thistles. 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 Yeah. That's how you say it in Scottish? Yes, that's like. Thistles. Right. Good turrets. There was a welcome message from Prince Charles on the audio guide. And what did he say? Oh, welcome to my wee hoose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please walk to the left of the fountain and find a place to stand as you near the grass. Where you can see the Abbey ruins. Must be down there. The Abbey was founded in 1128 after David I, King of Scots, saw a vision of a stag and a cross between its outlets. The Abbey of the Holy Rood included a set of rooms for the monarchs to use, more comfortable than Edinburgh Castle and its windswept rock. Eventually, the palace was built by King James IV in 1503. Looking out the large rectangular tower with turrets to the left of the palace. It's a good. 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 It's a new tower, which matched James V, was added to the right. As well as a long central building connecting to. Look at that, though. Extending, etc., etc. Et I can see, I can see why they built it here, because yeah. that is quite a view. It's a good old view, isn't it? <laughs> it's a good view. <laughs> yeah, you know, just standard wee mountain outside your outside your window. This is good, though. It's very Hogwartian. Should we go inside? Let's go inside. Okay. That's what it said in the guide. So this is Mary Queen of Scots actual actual bedroom which felt like an amazing privilege to be stood in because um, can you imagine me as a standard commoner ever getting a chance to go in Mary Queen of actual Scots bedroom so this is amazing it was really cool. Now Mary was very tall for the time she was actually six foot tall so um, some of these doorways in here are, are quite small for her so she would have definitely had to duck to get through. 
And here's all the family portraits. We've got Henry, Elizabeth and Edward as well there. And in this room next door to Mary's bedroom was the supper room, um, which was where Mary was dining on the 9th of March in 1566, when she witnessed the murder of her private secretary, David Rizzio. He was killed by her jealous husband, Lord Darnley, and a group of powerful Scottish lords. Rizzio was actually stabbed 56 times, and if you look very carefully on the floor, you can see that his blood still stains the floorboards. In this room as well were items that belonged to Mary as well, so she was a very keen needle worker and she used to uh, sit and darn for hours on end, what else are you going to do without things like Netflix and TV to watch, and um, I quite enjoyed this little picture of a cat that she made, it looked quite grumpy. Um, I don't know if cats just looked like that back then, because it seems like everybody drew them like that back then, so maybe they did just look like that. But this was quite nice to actually see some things that she'd made, which was um, really cool, and I'm amazed that they still exist. And there she is in a full-length painting as well, so you just kind of get the idea of how tall she was. She was um, a big, tall lady. Here we have Queen Victoria's tiny little tartan dress. Apparently during the Victorian times tartan was really popular and people used to wear it all the time. So um, yeah, this wasn't really an uncommon dress for, for women to have. Well, I guess rich women. Welcome to the most famous landmark in Glasgow. Pretending like you ain't doing nothing. I see you. <laughs> ah, there you are. Hello. How big are the seagulls here? Told you. The hilarious <laughs> fuck. Glasgow knows how to party on a Friday night. I was the boot. So what just happened? Nikki proved that I'm the best person for giving directions by taking us in completely the wrong direction. Our restaurant was meant to be five minutes away and then we started walking in the direction that it said it would be and then it was ten minutes away. Yeah, just that. And then every time I tried to uh, correct it, it decided we were going the opposite direction. It's really helpful. Yeah. That's okay though, a nice little stroll before dinner and I can appreciate it more. It's not what I wanted. No. But it's pretty. See, <laughs> look. Oh, oh. It's pretty. Yeah. What are you going to have for dinner? Well, I'm, I'm leaning towards pasta now. I could easily be swayed. Yeah. I need something high in carbs, I think. Yeah. 
Here we see Nikki trying to make friends with the local wildlife. What exotic beast are you trying to befriend this time? Simon. Here he is. Just fighting him. Oh, Bye. Him. Bye Simon. Sorry. That's great. <laughs> Just have that on a loop for 30 minutes. Yeah, I don't know what famous people they've got here. I guess if you're a fan of merchants and figures of the Scottish Industrial Revolution, there'll be people here. There's a memorial to William Wallace here. I don't know if it's actual actual grave, though. Eh? Well, I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be four separate graves. I'm in. Pizza arrives through the vending machine. Yeah. Oh. I want to go to there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no haggis in the full Scottish. I know. Uh, there is square sausage though. Square sausage, black pudding. There's no uh, potato potato scones either though. No. Skew. See, I, t I talk down to you, no, I, I talk in your accent so you understand what I'm talking about and then you throw it back in my face and put it in a Scottish accent. It's good. <laughs> you look nice in here. Yeah, in, in here. Oh, this looks nice. Yeah, you look nice in here. What are you day for? Yeah, nice. it suits you. <laughs> I'll always stay here. The colour of salt and vinegar packets really sets off my skin. Oh. I'm ready for a bit of brekkie.
ruins the whole thing. What ruins the <laughs> you need whole the thing? Con- you need the context. Would you like me to get one of the pictures? Tell us what's going on. What's going on, Nikki? I've got the giggles. Why have you got the giggles? <laughs> what's happened to us? We're accidentally at an old people's home having a beer. <laughs> it's alright though, I didn't realise old people's homes have bars in them. Apparently they do. Yeah. I reckon it's going to kick off when uh, when um, Hi-Ho Silver Lining comes on. I reckon so too, oh, sweet Caroline. <laughs> We're in the world's scariest lift. Is it? Oh, you missed it. <laughs> it more or less lines up with the floor, you'd be fine. Let's give it a go. I don't remember that being there last time. <laughs> I don't remember any of this being there last time. We are currently staying in the Overlook Hotel. It's Kubrickian. Go up then along, or along then up. That's the question. Let's go up. left on my own out there. <laughs> <laughs> After managing to survive the night at the Cumbria Grand Hotel, aka the Overlook Hotel, we then made our way onto a boat to escape. Yeah. Hello, Geese. Yeah, <laughs> they're worried. <laughs> you got them on the run. <laughs> Don't want to scourge anybody. <laughs> Oh, we excited? Oh, excited. Life on the ocean wave. Yeah. Help me! Oh, I can take these masks off now, can't we? Oh, come in here. Uh, <laughs> come to. Welcome to my boat. <laughs> and toot toot. <laughs> you uh, <laughs> Where are you taking me? I don't know. It's hostage. Yeah? Well, there's a speedboat coming now. I do oh, not okay. want to be in the wake of that one. Let's follow this boat, because hopefully he won't head for two of us. Yeah. Well, this is how we're getting home now, yeah? Yeah. We, we've moved to, uh, moved to water, <laughs> and we're going to go all the way down the Lake District to London. Yeah. OK. Look at this, though. Isn't it nice? Look at you driving a boat. First time driving a boat. Yeah, chase that, chase that boat. That's what I'm doing. Follow everybody else. Look at this 
the SOS call, yeah? <laughs> They said no swimming, no drinking, no swimming, no dancing, no smoking, no smoking, and then they set us on our way. Then it's quite pretty area, isn't it? Yeah, you can see all the, all, the, all, the, all the hoo has about. Quite scared of all the other boats, though. Yeah. I'll tell you that where's, where's that speedboat gone? Oh, he's, there. Miles, he's miles away it's now. There. Yeah, it gets a bit choppy when, uh, when, the, boats go by. when the boats go by. And then it's difficult to steer the boat. Right now, it's as flat as a lake, isn't it? Yeah. As they say. Is that what they say? No. Lake's as flat as a pancake. But what we're doing is sensibly following all the other boats because they're quite a long way ahead of us. So if they mess up, I've got time to turn around and go back the other way before they do. Yeah. There's, there's where we've been. We've gone quite a long way. We have, yeah. So we've been sailing for <laughs> 40 days, days now. now. <laughs> the, uh, we had to eat the cabin boy because we ran out of crackers. <laughs> but Nikki thinks she's figured out how to turn around. So she's gonna she's gonna use all of her skills to try and get us round back to pointing towards the dock. Now, I don't know whether I should just hang a right and just pull straight across. Yeah, yeah just stick your leg in the water. <laughs> be fine. He didn't really say anything about turning around, he just said half an hour up, then come back again. He we supposed to reverse all the way back. Maybe not, eh? Um, Before you start. Before I start. Okay, are we going? Oh yeah. Good times. Oh yeah, we're really turning now. Yeah. That's my concentration place. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get a bit choppy in the middle here. <laughs> oh Nikki. Look at her happy little face. I'm on a boat! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like a pirate. I am. Uh, Don't go near the eye. Oh, off we go. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> having a good time. Uh, it's alright, I've got a convenient uh, cute Is it alright? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to bath. Yeah. I can spew out this one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that woman was going to get a bum out over the uh, over the side. She's messing with her trousers. <laughs> They're getting away. Give it some welly. <laughs> Do you want to drive it? Uh, maybe, I will a, maybe I will in a bit. You can barely see the dock now. Join me in a hornpipe. 
straight now. We Nikki are. Nikki's going to try and drive up the dock straight <laughs> into the car park. Yeah, revving speed! <laughs> well, I just realised I'm in, in the way of the, both of these boats that are coming towards us. There's loads of them. It's an armada. Is this the dock that we came off? Or is it over there? I think it's over there, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Our holiday is over now. We are heading home from the Lake District. Um, we've got a five hour drive ahead of us, which will be fun. Um, we're gonna split it between us, unlike on the way up when I drove all the way up to Scotland, which is uh, which is no mean feat. <laughs> so um, yeah, we've had a good time. It's been a little bit disorganized because of COVID stuff. Everything's like pretty booked up, but um, yeah, we've had a pretty good relaxing time. Can't wait to see my kitten. That's what I'm excited about, just um, want to go and chill out with the cat. Right, Neil's coming back now, so um, time to head home. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. If you liked it, subscribe. Hopefully there'll be more travel videos that are a bit more exciting and not just the UK next time. Bye!